Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this podcast. I'm Joe, and with me is Charles. And this week we're going to be discussing the general musings of what the musings of the animation world. Uh, tonight, on tonight's agenda, we're going to be discussing um, Superman vs. the Elite, the new animated movie from uh, DC Entertainment. And we're also going to be discussing Ultimate Spider-Man, which I think Charles might want to have a few words <laughs> on. <laughs> Yes. Um, yes. Uh, should we get off with the um, should we get off with the movie subject then? Shall we? Um. Yes. Okay. Um, because just the other day you did introduce it to me and I did watch it the other day or so. <laughs> so, do you mind giving us a brief rundown of the plot? Okay, plot. Um, obviously it's a Superman episode which deals with. Him facing off against um, the elite, who is a group of, well, not really say villains per se. Um, they're more of a um, anti-heroes. Yeah, anti-heroes, and they're led by Manchester Black, a well, an English. If he was back in the sixties, English mm. hero, villain, whichever. And it tries to deal with the ethics of how far heroes should go in the fact should they kill villains if they cross a line. And it really deals with the... I think it tries to deal with the ethic of Superman in a modern day of 2012 and so on, where are his morals really still in effect in our day and age? And it really tries to question... If uh, if he's in the light or whether his ways are still where are still put up today, mm. that's pretty much what. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's you'll be unsurprised to hear that it's an actually an adaptation of a um, of um, I think it's issue seventy uh, seven hundred of um, the action of uh, action comics, which is. Um, Superman's main line. One of the things which, um, and it was uh, mainly discussing, uh, sort of, as you say, sort of ju- justification of what this is, whether Superman sort of, no, we are not above the law sort of a- aspects actually is really justified in this mon- modern day world. So, um, whilst I find the link to the um, original source material, uh, do you want to um, give your general thoughts on it? General thoughts, um, throughout the entire movie, I never actually hated it, but I found myself underwhelmed by it. Um, because we've heard this story before, and while it's, even today, it's still a good debate between both parties, I still feel like it was done better in other works. But yeah, um... The character of Superman is how you expect him to be. He holds up for justice, he holds up for fairness, and as the movie keeps on repeating the American way, even though he tries to represent the world, not just America. I mean, um, yeah, one of the more interesting um, recent uh, happenings in before the DC Universe got reboot, rebooted is the fact he actually um, left, he, he basically ditched his American citizenship because the fact he um, was having trouble with the various American government's shady choices and so on and so forth. Mm. And so, yeah, but it... Yeah, so... <laughs> I've got the... Um, I've, I've got the link to the um, Wikipedia article with me, which is uh-huh. always useful. Um, it's It was uh, issue 775 of uh, Action Comics, and it was published in... March 2001. One of the reasons why this was actually made was because of the fact um, suit, um, DC was rapidly getting sold out, uh, being sold out by a super, by um, Wildstorm Comics and their superhero team, The Authority, who were basically ultra-violent, very cynical, uh, revolution, sort of this whole revolutionary superhero movement who basically want to basically took over the world. And basically started running things, and um, this is basically um, the, the it was written by Joe Kelly, and this, this is basically his rebuttal to that kind of aspect 
aspect of it of superhero universe i i have a soft spot for the authority actually but if i'm honest i do actually agree with sort of joseph kelly a hell of a lot more when it comes to sort of ideals but yeah um so yeah that's it was an it was an adaptation of sort of a quite an important superman story Mm -hmm. Mm. and what do you think of sort of like um uh, the the elite, for example, these sort of people like Manchester Black and so on and so forth. Um, I like them. I mean, for the most part, um, you have the characters like um, were well, they Ferrer Black, Cold Cast, and it was it was Manchester Black, Manchester Black, uh, Cold Cast, the Hat, who I thought was epic. Yes, he uh, was. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there was also Menagerie, who was the sort of um woman who had the weird sort of flight and worm powers sort of thing. Yes, um, how it goes, um, Manchester Black runs the team and if you can easily recognise him by the Union Jack on his t-shirt for the world to see. Mm. Um, he's the leader who has some, well, to put it like, like psychic powers. I've, I think there's a whole lot more, but I never really got a full idea what his limitations were, per se. He's, he's kind of the sort of te- telekinetic, sort of yeah. telepathic sort of thing. Basically think of him as sort of uh, sort of a male ver- a male English version of Jean Grey, only with yes. sort of yeah. Yes, the hat who was both of our favourites, who was a complete drunk who has a really nice hat that just he literally just pulls anything he wants out of it. And he, he's very imaginative of what he uses it for. As long as it's magical. It, yes. As long as it's magical. Um, they... Col- Colcast had, I believe, it was electromagnetism yeah. powers, where he took an energy and repelled it. Mm. And the girl of the group, um, well, imagine she had weird alien spores. Well, she kind of looked like a demon or gargoyle, yeah. and she just had aliens attached to her that would just act as her little minions um, or something. In the sort of backstory, she was sort of basically fused with an alien weapon, uh, weapon cache, and so it was sort of basically all part of her system and so yeah i mean Um, so yeah that was (laughs) so yeah anyway continue yes um the group is actually very interesting they're very diverse they can be very cocky of themselves but they each have a personality to them but backstory wise the only one that's ever any real focus is manchester black i mean of we have a thing where he's probably closest to the hat and he gets a few good lines mm. and man, man, man I can never say her name um menagerie menagerie call I need Pam. to remember that menagerie call Pam, everybody else calls her that yes menagerie and Colcast sort of have a romance between them but yeah backstory is all given to Manchester Black and his opinions and how he thinks they should be done and that everyone else literally just follows his example so he's really the only character of interest that rivals Superman mm, yeah he's sort Cause, of, yes because yeah. he has a completely different backstory to Superman who had a very loving family he, he, and he, had, he, had, he had the Kents taking care of him you know, there's yes. nothing in every sort of Superman story. The Kents have always basically been really, really nice parents, really, really good parents. And with sort of Manchester Black, he of course comes from an abused family. His mother's died, and so on and so forth. Yes, he comes from a very sympathetic background, and you really root for him, and you kind of see his ideals. But then once it's revealed the actual real backstory behind him, I felt like the character sort of fell flat for me, so it was like, oh, great, that, these were the consequences of his actions, so now obviously Superman's in the right, and his way of thinking is clearly the wrong one, and I felt like they were really trying to get themselves out of a hole of you sympathising his side, trying to say, no, we need to get everyone on Superman's side. Yeah. One of the things which I kind of, particularly when it comes to his backstory, and particularly when we go over to sort of Manchester, is it just me, or do do they sort of American companies seem to think that Manchester is some is sort of rooted in sort of the sixties, seventies sort of thing with all yes, terrorist they never they never get us right. Sort of <laughs> terraced just... houses, grey overcast skies. Sort well, of... um I did grow up in a few terrace houses in my day, but yes, they seem to have one or two opinions about us. 
either we really like our top hats and eye monocles, or we are a bunch of swearing football supporters. <laughs> Uh, that being said, I do like I do like Manchester Black. He's got this wonderful sense of it, it's all bolstered up by um, sort of uh, Robin Atkin da- down sort of portrayal of him. He this this is the same guy who's done Mumra before, which is Mumra in the new Thundercats reboot, and it's he sort of really really suits the sort of very gritty, very cynical edge of uh, Manchester Black. Yeah, sorry, I was just going a little bit. Um... Uh, yeah, that was fine. <laughs> It's actually also quite interesting, if I may go back to sort of geeking about, out about um, voice actors, they've managed to get George Newburn back in for playing uh, Super- Superman, who played him during the Justice League cartoons, which I absolutely, which one of my favourite animated series ever. Mm-hmm. And um, that monologue he did, did at the end, <laughs> fuck me, that was chilling. Yes, it was. I finally get it now. <laughs> Yes, I'm pretty sure Superman cracked for a few seconds there. That Holy last act was awesome. Shit. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Superman can go dark. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But yes, um, getting back to the actual story plot, um, basically it all begins with Superman, who's just recently put the atomic skull into custody. And the whole debate over is this guy's obviously done a bunch of serious crimes. We've actually, in the first five minutes of this film, seen him kill a bunch of random people. And mm. these are just bystanders who literally disintegrated before the eyes. He, he, he just atomized them, yeah. 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 And the whole question is that, should Superman have just arrested him when he could have literally just killed him when he had that opportunity? Mm. And it was by that point I had my iffy with the story itself but I'll get back to my issues with it later mm. but for the most part um, there's a disturbance in um, what was it Afghan was it it, it was um, I think it was it was in um, basically um, the DC universe have these a number of countries which could be anywhere um, oh. this one was sort of Bialya which is totally not Libya oh. and um, it was interesting because um, quite often in the comics um Bialya and the neighbouring country, Kurak, which is totally not Iraq or Iran at all. Totally right. not. Um, but yeah, they're usually sort of next next to each other. And they were, in this one, they're invading a country which was another sort of ex of a country, which is sort of far in sort of Eastern European area. But yeah, anyway, so yeah. he turns up there. He turns up there because there's a disturbance. And in the midst of this fight, the elite show up and literally take over and start defending these people. And Superman's just watching the entire thing. He's teamed up with several heroes before and he's always joined in, tried to be friendly with them. But with this one, he's literally standing aside, looking at them going, what the hell are these guys? Having, <laughs> having, the... Yeah, Having said that, he's usually sort of had a decent idea about what kind of, it's sort of when he's ever teamed up with him. Heroes before it's usually done, been done sort of either through the Justice League or through something else, and so it's always sort of been planned for him. And this kind of just came out completely left field. And I'm not, yes. not, yeah, yes. And there's a cute scene after where he kind of teams up with them and they t- take care of the monster, or whatever. And mm. the lead are literally they're meant to be the rivals, the bad guys of this movie, and they are fangasming over the fact they are looking at the real life Superman. You can just hear the fanboys going, oh my god, oh my god, it's really him, it's really him. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, bless, I want to hug them. <laughs> well, you want to hug one of them, I have a feeling. It's it's much better to hug well, two of them. You don't really want to hug Cold Cast because he's sort of, what, eight foot something and built like a sh- not to mention, shit out um, and... You don't want to really hug Ma- Menagerie because of the fact you might catch something. You you want to hug the Hat and Manchester Black. But you don't really want to hug the other two. Oh yes, the uh, those two are just there for brute force power. Those guys are. I think they're just there for comedy. <laughs> yeah, well, until yeah. shit starts going down. So yes, where well, after that he's met them, they literally just vanish out of sight he gets curious about them and goes all the way to England so he can track them down and find out what their story is and where they stand and they he learns a bit about obviously about Manchester Black's backstory and how he became the person he is today 
then um, there's a sort of incident where they work together and he basically leads the elite and helps Manchester really push how far his powers can go. And it gives him a real confidence boost, which really backfired on Superman. Mm, yeah, particularly when it comes to the... Um... <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so gradually they start gaining more and more popularity, particularly with this kind of big stunt and this big team up with Superman. And um, slowly mm-hmm. they begin to um, uh, make their ideas a lot more apparent. I think it all really comes to a head when um, Atomic Skull escapes, of course. Yes, because there's an incident with a character that really pushes it, but we won't go into spoilers. We might as, we might as well, because we've already... Yeah, we, we might as well, Charlotte. Well, what, okay, fine. One person is literally killed for this... Well, well, he's with his son, and he actually gets killed. And this little boy is just... We see him early in the film, and he's just crying his eyes out. And he's just like... the Elite are basically making it the kid's option. Now they're saying, Superman won't kill him, we will. And it's just giving the boy a chance to say, tell us to do it. And Superman is begging him to say no be a better person there is a better way to do this and the boy just says kill him mm. <laughs> kill that son of a bitch <laughs> so, i really really yes, I, was... I, I really yes, like a... oh sorry yes yes well there's a bit more stuff that happens um before we get to that point but yeah you go yeah i really like that scene because of the fact it's sort of really sort of this really sort of powerful build up and sort of it just seems like superman is just slowly losing control of this whole situation it's just all descended into mob rule and that final line is just ooh yeah yeah because again um, the main thing they're trying to do is um they're trying to make it um sh- the choice but obviously the death penalty and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing but at the same time what they're really trying to push is it's superman superman from the golden age do his ethics and morals really count in the modern day world or are they really obsolete? He's out of date. He's just an old man at the time for this young, new hip crowd to come in and take mm. over. But yeah, um, we learned the whole about the I mean, we see their base where they're on a ship that really doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm pretty sure it means something to you because the ship comes out of nowhere from mm. another dimension. It's exactly, just their yeah. base. And I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> This Why is, could they just not have a base? <laughs> this is a whole another thing about the Authority. They had this huge sort of interplanetary ship called the Carrier, which basically could sort of teleport them in and out of anywhere in any situation. And so, yeah, um, it's one of those situations where it was sort of super huge, large enough for a city, and so on and so forth. And um, it kind of, uh, yeah, this this one sort of is a little bit different from the Carrier because of the fact this one is called Bunny and is actually properly organic. <laughs> Bunny. Yes. <laughs> Who calls their ship bunny? <laughs> I don't know. Some sarcastic British person, probably. Yes. yes. Why would you look at that and think it's a bunny? <laughs> well, I don't know. It kind of had the ears. <laughs> but yes, anyway. Um, slowly, the, uh, the elites start to gain more and more uh, sort of popularity until um, the, the whole thing throws down between um, Bialya and the neighbouring nation. And they start to attack each other. And as a result, Superman basically manages to catch all the jets sort of from doing any kind of bombing run from both cities and said, it doesn't have to go down like this. It doesn't have to sort of stop any kind of fight. And uh, the elites show up and say, well, too late. We killed their leaders. Yeah, Suck they totally on that. Did a watch. They totally did a watchman. Yeah. <laughs> go, go fuck yourself, Superman. We just killed their leaders. We've just ended this. And yeah, so. Super- he literally just makes a threat to the entire world saying they're going to clean up the world act, they are going to be judge and executioner, mm. and basically just talks down to them like a grown-up or teacher saying, if you don't get along, we'll take care of you ourselves. So play nice. <laughs> this, that's one of the things which, again, there's a, this infamous speech in The Authority where their leader, Jer- Jenny Sparks, um, says, um, we are the authority, behave basically to an alien world which was trying to invade theirs and so yeah it kind of all works out it kind of all most of this most of the comic feels very much like a very well constructed rebuttal to the authority how that translates translates over to a movie it there it sort of varies so sort of massively i think on some on some some 
on some levels it works very well, I think, particularly when you've got the whole idea of Superman versus another team of heroes who do things very differently, doing much more modern update dating and so on and so forth. And particularly when it comes to sort of trying to show Superman just how fucking scary the guy is. Yes. Yes. But in other aspects, particularly when it comes to sort of like some of the more stuff which particularly relate to the authority, it doesn't quite work, obviously, yeah. Yes. Um, so basically what we're leading up to is the last act in the film where the elite call out Superman for a fight because apparently all the other Justice League heroes no longer exist and call him out into a fight to say we are going to have this epic battle with the entire world watching and their threat is we are going to kill you then that will be the final example to the world they are not to question us. Yeah. And the fight goes in their favour. I mean, so, before Superman was sparring with them early, and it was quite clear if they work together, they can find ways of over, overpowering him. And it seems like they are winning this fight um, at, obviously, a request where he says, let's take this to the moon so no one in my city gets hurt. Yeah. And um, from that point, it looks like they are trouncing Superman... And they are literally lecturing him on why his ways are no longer working and he has to step aside. And then it gets very dark. <laughs> he he says um, he, they end up basically sort of publicly executing Superman. Mm. And it, it seems like um, every, everyone was like, my God, they can't actually fucking do that. I mean, I mean, I know Superman's outdated, but the guy's Superman. You, you can't just kill him. And um, then, and then, sort of, they were all sort of celebrating in their victory. And then, fucking George Newburn, sort of te George Newburn, sort of Superman, terrifying, sort of. I finally get it now. Yes, and they are panicking. My... They are looking around, and yeah. they can't see yeah. him, but they can hear his voice. Yeah, it's sort of, it's all got this echo effect, like it's a, like coming from everywhere at once. It's like, I finally understand that I've been treating you people. Like, well, people. Ooh, just so chilling. Oh, and he turns into a villain. He picks them off one by one, scaring them, mocking them. And this is this probably goes back to, um, to a number of times with Superman, where he even says at one point he treats the world like it's cardboard. He can't allow himself to go too far. He can't allow himself to do so much damage. And here... He doesn't hold back. That was from um, Justice League, uh, Justice League Unlimited, the final episode. That whole world yes. of cardboard speech. Oh. oh yes, that was a brilliant speech. Yeah, Wait, he he's doing it basically beating up a god, and it's here he's just channeling it on sort of heroes who are fairly powerful, but they're just still humans. And he's yes, and yeah. Especially the way he does. I mean, early on it seems like these guys are powerful. They are they are kicking his ass when he turns around and just says I've literally been treating you like a bunch of kids I've been using kid gloves the entire time letting you beat me to a bloody pulp and now I'm getting serious and it's like whoa they didn't stand a chance to begin with yeah. <laughs> he's been playing them the entire time and he he really scares them yes oh my god Oh, he sends them running like little children, and just the look on Lois Lane's face when she she doesn't even recognize Superman anymore. Mm. Um, by the way, I did not believe for one second that was Lois Lane. <laughs> well, you were right because of the fact that was played by um, Paul per that's uh, Paulie Perrette rather than um, who? Oh God, who played Lois Lane in the? Um, I should know this because this is that was my favorite. It was my sort of favorite animated show. I'm just gonna have to have a look for a moment. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, it was Dana Delaney, Dana Delaney, who played um, uh, Lois Lane in the Superman animated series and Justice League and Justice League, League Unlimited, who sort of does a fantastic job. I think um, Paulie per uh, Paulie Perrette does an all right job, if I'm honest. Doesn't do a fantastic job, but doesn't do a terrible, doesn't do sort of a bad job. She's just sort of there, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. It's it's, just, it's the same way that. Um, it's a, but it's the same way that sort of some other aspects are just sort of there, like um, I don't know, um, like like um, 
Manchester Black's sister Vera. I, I can't believe who would name their their son Manchester in England. I I don't know. That that's a random thing to call your child. You were begging him to grow up and put the Union Jack on his chest. Yeah. <laughs> Just ugh. Why? By the way, I'm aware of slang and all that, but half the time I couldn't understand what Manchester was trying to say. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm not very diverse about my own country, am I? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Um, but yeah, he puts the fright, he puts the frighteners on them. And um, what was found it really interesting was the fact that Manchester Black was like, "Oh my God, this is a massive betrayal. This is a, like, my God, you can't do this. You're Superman. Why are you doing this?" <laughs> Yes, because um, he doesn't start with just beat him off. He picks him off one at a time, killing them. And we'll get to the twist ending later on. But he's watching these guys get picked off one by one. One of them's having their lungs crushed out of them. One of them is... um, Hat was the one who had his lungs crushed when he was dumb enough to jump into a vacuum. Um, The girl was injected with something, but I don't remember what it was doing to her. It basically made her powers go out of control. Um, The cold cast was basically thrown up into space. Oh yes, that was a very funny scene, actually. (laughs) I I don't know whether the the dialogue afterwards was meant to be chilling or not, but it was just like... um... I've just thrown it. Totally to... I've just Superman. I've just thrown. I've just thrown cold cast up into space. If you had super yes, hearing, it's... you could hear his lungs pop. Yeah. So he says. He says something along the lines of, "I just threw him up in the point second at this height," and it's like, I know that was one hell of a threat, and that was badass, but that was comical as hell. That one did not make me cringe. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Then, yeah, I guess the point where only Manchester is left and he is freaking out. He is telling Bunny to get him out of there to do something. And Clark is, he is messing with this guy and he's just saying, you know what, fine, I'll kill. I will do to you what exactly you intended to do to me. And he shows no remorse in his actions. Mm. And Manchester is for everything he's got with him when earlier he was trouncing Superman and it's doing squat mm. now. Particularly when, the, particularly when um, Superman basically gives and him a Super- lobotomy and just cuts out the um, organ he needs. Yes. His telepathic organ thingy. Yeah. Yes. He does something very chilling, which you don't think even Superman would actually do even for an act, where he practically just x-rays him looks for the connection in his brain to his powers and using his heat vision to a concentrated level goes through his eyes and cuts it and gets rid of his powers. Mm, Sort of just surgically removes everything, all his powers, yeah. It's actually quite interesting because Manchester Black is actually appeared later in the uh, DC Comics stuff where he actually developed this real vendetta against Superman for doing that, and he began stalking his wife, stalking uh, Lewis Lane, trying to kill her. And it kind of ended. It kind of ended with um, Superman basically going, "You've done everything you can, everything you can to me. I've already showed you what I can do, and I'm not going to stoop to your level. I'm not going to kill you." And so Manchester Black, rather tragically, basically goes back home and hangs himself because he he wanted to make it so that. Superman would basically come down to his level, and he doesn't. So. Yes. And going back to the film, when he does think Superman Man has now come down to his level and is going to finish him off, he is on his knees. He looks like he's about to cry his eyes out. Then, so then he just kind of calls him out for being a hypocrite and all that. And then Clark is like, "Yes, that did scare you." That was terrifying how I could so easily give into my rage and just do all this stuff. It was so simple, it was so quick, so easy. But it's a good thing I'm not like that. Mm. And then he makes his big reveal. Everyone is alive, <laughs> everyone is safe. No one was in danger. Yeah. He he used his robot or whatever they were. Superman and, robot, yeah. Yes. He set up the whole thing where he got each of the villains and but they were never once in any danger. And even when he brought the fight back from the moon onto the city in the middle of his own city, no less, even when all this destruction is going back and forth, cars are flying, debris is hitting bystanders, none of them were ever in any danger. 
it was all one big act so he could basically put the fear into Manchester, the same fear he put into the entire world and gave him a taste of his own medicine. Mm. Yeah. And so sort of that was sort of like the... I, I like that as sort of a as the sort of twist in the comic. And in the movie, it kind of, it works pretty much just as well. Yeah. But yeah, it, overall, what do you think of the sort of... What sort of rating would you give this out of, I don't know, 10? <sighs> 10... <laughs> Well, it's not really a bad film per se. It caught my interest, especially the ending. But I don't know. I guess I would give it maybe I don't know a six, seven at the best. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, admittedly, it's it's one of those films like um, All Star Superman, which I actually do totally, re- I do totally recommend. It's not a, um, it's nothing. It's nothing. Nowhere near as good as the comic. It's the comic if you understand the context of it. And to sort of, because I read, I read quite a lot of the um, authority issue uh, sort of series before I jumped into the before I sort of went and read uh, Superman. Uh, What's so funny about truth, justice, and the American way? And I completely got it, and I got the sort of mindset that was in, and sort of this. I just sort of like it's it's one of those things like it's like one of those things. It's like I don't know a very sort of well done. It's like a very well done diss. It's a very well done. St- I, I just sort of, it's one of those things where you read it and you're just like, damn, you just got served. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's one of those situations where it's, you, it's a very well done comic. And for the movie, it, I think it's a good adaptation. I give it, I give it a seven, if I'm honest. I mean, it's, okay. yeah, it's nothing like the, co- not as good as the co- com- comic, but sort of, for what it is, it's got some very d- good animation, some very good sort of, great sort of voice acting by George Newton. Newburn and Robin Atkin down, Downs. Um, it's got some fantastic sort of moments of uh, comedy, great, great moments of pathos, and probably the darkest we've seen Superman in an animated series when he's yes. not basically being a just Justice Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, I liked it. I liked the fights. I liked the characterization. I love the moments between Lois Lane and Clark where she is literally trying to comfort him but admitting in her own way sometimes she does think it, it would be easier yeah. if people were just executed especially the bad guys and yeah she has her own opinion and it's really honest and you sympathize with that. That's actually one of the things which Lois Lane, she's the daughter of a general so if her holding that those kind of opinions actually makes quite a bit of sense. She, she mm. grew up... I mean, I don't know, because I didn't grow up in a military household, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I have, yes. yeah. Is, does that sort of... Is, but, um, obviously, since we're not really a whole Americans where it's diverse, where there still are death penalty tolls and they're still arguing it here, we don't really have that so much, so I'm not really exposed to the option. Mm. But I have situations where I look at something just, even if it is for just a flash of a single second, I think to myself, this is complete bullshit. It'd be so easy. We just just killed the guy and solved all our problems. Mm. But never strong emotions like that. Normally they've just been fleeting, sure. but the, I've never really been exposed to the type of level stuff she obviously has. Or most people in mil- military households, even then I've been quite Mm. Okay. Sheltered about things. Okay. I had a strong compassion for human life, but it. But yes. Um. Right. Overall, there was stuff I liked about it, but at the same time, um, I had my ups and downs with this, and particularly in two central scenes. One of them I mentioned before was when you find out the details of Manchester's backstory and how he became the person he was. He half told the truth to Superman but we find out he was holding darker details and I felt like that just killed his angle because I could no longer sympathize with his point of view and Mm. it felt like yeah your case has just fallen flat and I felt that was that was kind of a disappointment Mm. yeah yeah the second one however was literally in the middle of this argument where Superman is with the leader's of this kind of, I think it's just America, really. And they're discussing the whole thing of they have, um, yeah, Atomic Skull, that was it. Yeah. Atomic Skull in custody, 
and they won, and they are literally debating over the fact Superman could have killed him when he had the chance, think... and they're like, he should be above us, he should be able to make these calls that we kind, and I was like, no. I think this was the be- UN as well, so... Yes, and I was like, no, you are being cowardly. I did not buy this for a single second. Mm. You have the atomic skull in custody. You know for a fact, in your jurisdiction, the death penalty is not allowed. It is a crime in itself. And you are literally saying, oh, we really want to kill this guy because it would be so simple and we have a killing machine that could do this for us. And what you're saying is you want to give atomic skull the, the snap... But you don't want to be responsible for the fallback, so you want to put the blame on someone else who could possibly mm. handle it. They are not being righteous. They are not being clever. They are being cowardly behind, hiding behind Superman, where he has done his part. No one's asking him to save the world. He's done his part out of his own good will. And now they're saying, yeah, we want you to go a step further, even though we have no... We shouldn't even be asking you that. Mm. I think that's a good. He's handed them over to the forty. It's no longer his responsibility. What happens next? I think that's a good note to end on, actually. And uh, if mm. we, um, we'll be talking about Super Ultimate Spider-Man a little bit next. But I think it's good time for a break at the moment. Okay. Ah yes. <laughs> 